Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Matt Callahan. I'm a, uh, a board director of Orthocell. Um, Orthocell is a regenerative medicine company. Uh, we're focused on the regeneration of tendon and ligaments, and also the, uh, the guided regeneration of tissue. So we've uh, heard a lot this afternoon about cartilage. Um, the company's founders actually started life uh, in the cartilage area back in 1999 uh, and developed the product that became Macy um, and commercialised that product in Australia uh, and in Asia. Um, and in 2005, uh, we're sitting around and obviously got bored um, and thought, what is the next area in uh, musculoskeletal regeneration that has not been addressed and, and really focused on tendon and ligament as that next uh, big opportunity. So I have to show the disclaimer and, and the safe harbour statement. Please make note of that. Uh, we are a listed company. Um, so let me introduce Orthocell to you. So uh, we were founded in 2006. Uh, we have a focus on developing cellular therapies and collagen scaffolds or, or tissue guides uh, for the treatment of human tendons uh, and ligaments and also uh, soft tissue defects. Uh, we've been listed on the stock exchange since last summer. Uh, and today I want to focus on, on two products, our Ortho ATI product uh, and our Cell Grow product. Uh, we do have a legacy product from a background uh, in ACI, which is a, a more efficient and cost-effective version of the, the current ACI products. Just an overview of our, our corporate structure. Um, we've got about a year's cash on hand. Uh, we've got a, a relatively small market cap being in Australia. We're not rated as highly, uh, obviously, as the US companies. Um, but most importantly, we bring to this uh, team that has more than 15 or 16 years' experience in cell therapies. So uh, Paul Anderson, our CEO, uh, and Professor Minghao Zeng, our CSO, uh, as I mentioned, were involved in the early days of, of commercialising autologous cartilage, autologous chondrocyte implantation. Uh, and we're fortunate to also have uh, Professor Lars Lidgren, uh, who was the UN's uh, chair of the, the Bone and Joint Decade, uh, as part of the team as well. Uh, very supportive uh, investor base out of Australia, Asia, and also the United States. Uh, and as I'll talk about later in the presentation, we're making uh, some strong moves into the US with uh, a phase two under US IND. So let me focus first on uh, Ortho ATI. Uh, the ATI obviously stands for autologous tenocyte implantation, autologous being from the patient and back into the patient, so these are the patient's own cells, uh, and these cells are also homologous, so they come out of a type of tissue that they're going to go back into. So this is not about early undifferentiated stem cells, this is about more mature stem cells. We went through a very uh, solid procedure to choose this type of cell uh, to regenerate tendon, uh, and it's been very successful. So just a quick overview of the clinical process. Um, a patient will come into a range of different physicians. It's not just orthopedic surgeons, it's sports physicians and general practitioners. We take a very small biopsy. Uh, we remove the, the tendon stem cells from that tissue material, culture them up uh, in a very quick process, about three to four weeks generally, and we re-inject them back into the tendon, the damaged part of the tendon using an ultrasound guided procedure. So these stem cells are not floating around the body. Uh, they're not attached to scaffolds. This is a non-surgical procedure. The patient walks in, the patient walks back out, and they uh, evidence very early pain reduction and very quick uh, improvement in function as well. So Orthocell, Ortho ATI is positioned as a treatment to actually address the underlying pathology of damaged tendon. So for those of us that are not familiar, the body goes through what's called a healing fatigue model. So if we've played sport and we've, we've pulled a hamstring or we've damaged uh, an Achilles or we've done some other damage to one of the tendons in our body, the body can generally heal that tendon. Okay? But after a little while with re-injury and with, with age, the degeneration of that tendon turns from tendonitis into tendinopathy. Okay, and the body loses its ability to replace the healthy stem cells that actually build tendon. So what we do is we intervene in that process by introducing new and healthy stem cells that are turned on to be tendon cells. Okay, those tendons go, those tenocytes go into the damaged area of the cell, they lay down collagen, they secrete growth 
factors, and they engraft into the tendon. So they're actually doing the job and also recruiting other stem cells to do the job of fixing tendon. Uh, we have some of the longest term uh, data in the industry uh, for this therapy, uh, now out uh, to five years with the first patients that we treated. Um, and it's a very, very cost effective benefit. So many of the patients that we're dealing have failed all conservative treatment uh, and are on the surgical list. So just to give you an idea of some of the clinical data from our phase 2A studies, which we conducted in Australia. Uh, on the top part of the slide there, you'll see some summarised data from our tennis elbow study. Tennis elbow obviously um, being the lateral epicondyle tendon. So in this case, we took 20 patients that were on the surgical list to have a surgical intervention. Uh, we treated them with a single injection of, of tendon stem cells. Uh, and what you see on the left-hand side, up the top left-hand side, is a very fast reduction in pain. So these stem cells are going in, they are actually reducing the inflammation, they're secreting growth factors, and the patient feels almost an instant uh, reduction in their pain. That pain reduction is carried out over time, but most importantly, we also see uh, improvement in function. Okay? And we've had a couple of speakers this afternoon talk about the importance of both pain reduction and also the improvement in function. So the test in tennis elbow is grip strength. Okay, so we test the patients at the start, we test the patients uh, at the various time points, and at four and a half years, you see a 200% improvement in grip strength. Um, interestingly, from a pharmacoeconomic point of view, of the 20 patients that we treated, only one of them proceeded to surgery. So if we're rescuing the large bulk of patients from the surgical list, that obviously has a great impact on the patient's lives from a curative perspective, but also a significant impact on the health system as well. Uh, down the bottom there, you'll see some data from our gluteal tendon study. Um, the gluteal tendon is a, a particularly problematic tendon in women aged between the ages of about 35 and 55. Uh, there's no real intervention that works. Steroids don't work very well. Surgery works very badly. Uh, so here, a relatively small study, 12 patients, but we're able to show dramatic reduction in pain and a dramatic increase in function. So our goal with, with OrthoATI is to move beyond the marketing approvals that we have in Australia uh, and in parts of Asia and bring the therapy into the biggest markets in the world, namely the US, Japan and Europe. So we're in the process of finalising an IND to go straight into a phase two uh, randomised study in the United States, treating the tennis elbow and obviously we'll follow that with a phase three and, and file a BLA. Uh, what's interesting about this space is um, we've heard probably from three or four uh, cartilage companies today, there doesn't appear to be anyone who is this advanced in the area of tendon regeneration. So for the, the orthopaedic companies, which are one of our targets for this therapy, they are interested in moving beyond the typical mechanical repair and the replacement of joints into the actual repair and regeneration of the underlying pathology. So I'll move very quickly to uh, talk a little bit about our, our scaffold product. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with scaffolds, um, we've been using these sorts of products, collagen-based products, in cartilage repair for more than 15 years. So they're often used uh, in orthopaedics uh, to stabilise, mechanically stabilise tendons uh, and also cartilage. Uh, but they're also used in, in general surgical repairs as well, things from hernia repairs to other areas. So from our work previously in cell therapies, we went looking for a collagen scaffold, a, a tissue or bone regeneration guide um, that served a number of purposes. It needed to be strong, it needed to be biocompatible, uh, and it also needed to be very cell friendly because we're a, we're a cell therapies company primarily. Uh, we couldn't find one that suited us on the market, even from the, the ones that we had used from cartilage repair, and so we made our own. Uh, so we developed a collagen scaffold. Uh, we are going to file this for CE Mark uh, before the end of this year. And what's unique about our collagen scaffold is that we have preserved the collagen structure and the collagen fibres. And this is really important for a couple of reasons, one of which is strength. Okay, traditionally, when you make a collagen scaffold, you take some um, animal material or some uh, cadaveric material, you chop it up to remove the DNA and the foreign cellular material, and in the process, you destroy the cell friendliness and the strength. Okay, we have not had to do that. The other interesting thing about the scaffold is that it's actually by layer. So on one side, we've got a sort of a bird's nest or a rough surface, which is very cell friendly. On the other side, it's smooth. So you can imagine this in general surgical applications where you don't want adhesion inside the body. 
So we sort of started this with a view towards orthopaedic applications. We use it in tendon and cartilage repair, but it's expanded beyond that now into general surgical repair and even into things like nerve regeneration. And I'll give you a couple of examples for where we're using the scaffold outside the area of orthopaedics. I think we're far enough away from lunch we can show some of these photos. So the first one uh, that we're using the scaffold for is in the repair of tympanic membranes or eardrums. Um, so currently what happens with tympanic, uh, ronic, uh, chronic ruptured tympanic membranes is the a surgical intervention occurs where they sort of cut behind your ear, uh, they peel back the ear and they take the surface of the bone which is called periosteum, a type of tissue, and they use that as a tympanic membrane or an eardrum. Um, kind of works some of the time. That's about a two-hour operation with significant donor site morbidity where you take the covering off the bone uh, and it's very painful. So we've changed that intervention to be a 17-minute operation using an off-the-shelf collagen scaffold which vascularizes very quickly and actually heals the eardrum. Uh, fantastic intervention. The other uh, clinical trial that we have ongoing at the moment is in the area of guided bone repair. Uh, so if you've had a, a tooth out and you're having a post put in, often the dental surgeon needs to rebuild the bone uh, to be able to put a post in, to be able to put an implant on top of that. One of the problems with doing that intervention is that the, the gum or the soft tissue grows back into that void and it doesn't heal or doesn't uh, prepare itself for an implant as well. So in this case, the collagen scaffold is a beautiful cover for bone. We've used this in large bone voids as well for serious injuries and, and for things like uh, oncology applications, uh, and it works very, very well. And again, this application is being filed for CE mark before the end of the year. I'll touch quickly uh, on some of our pipeline products. I want to pay, pay particular attention to uh, the laboratory grown tendon. So this started life as a control experiment. So we're asked by many of the regulators and many of our scientific advisors, how do you know that the tenocytes, the tendon stem cells that you're injecting are actually rebuilding tendon? Okay? The best way to do that is to take those tenocytes outside the body and try and build tendon in a bioreactor. So in this case, we took uh, the tendon stem cells, uh, we created a bioreactor, we actually mobilised that neotendon, that, that early tendon material, and we've been able to demonstrate that we can grow tendon outside the body for the first time uh, anyone in the world has been able to do that. Um, this now is a pipeline product. Obviously, we can do full tendon uh, replacement. We can even combine it with our scaffold, our collagen scaffold, to provide mechanical strength and actually start to rebuild tendons and ligaments for the first time. And that's, that's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we've also got some pipeline products in the area of growth factors. Uh, these are tissue-specific growth factors, so they're being extracted and manufactured, particularly for different types of tissue repair, whether that's bone, uh, whether that's tendon, or whether that's ligament. So just to wrap up, um, as a company, uh, we're positioned very well for growth. Uh, we have, to our knowledge, the only uh, tendon and ligament regenerative uh, repair process in the market at the moment. We're moving through the process in a, in a very sensible fashion for US FDA and EMA, EA approval. Uh, we are filing the registration for our cell growth scaffold uh, in the next couple of months for, for a CE mark and then we'll follow that with a 510k uh, in the United States. Uh, so we're very excited about the opportunities for the company. Uh, we're looking for partners for the technology, particularly in the United States, uh, and we look forward to talking a lot more about some of the clinical data that we generate uh, in the coming 12 months. Thanks very much.